welcome the committee to the 2021 Track and Field Committee. Uh, my name is Jen Roberts Ulig, Assistant Commissioner for CHASA, uh, as well as Lane, my awesome uh, counterpart who you guys work mostly with um, before I even I even get to talk to you. So um, huge thank you to Lane. This isn't possible without him and, and his uh, dedication and commitment to all of our sports. And so um, track being one of our favorites. So we're really excited to to be here. And um, we were very excited to be able to have a track meet in its fullest capacity last um, spring. So that was huge um, as we were one of the only sports that were able to do that um, in its full capacity last year. Um, Rhonda was also supposed to be on this morning and she got a call from uh, the one of the health departments and so she's on a zoom that she was not not expecting this morning so I'm just going to read you her her note here um, she just wanted to uh, extend her sincere congratulations for a successful season and an event in 2021 in such a roller coaster time when we didn't know if the answers would be yes can't um, yes or no or we can't I appreciate the leadership of the committee and extend kudos to Jen Lane committee, definitely our administrators and coaches statewide, and of course our track and field officials that traveled hundreds of miles to cover and support um, all the additional meets throughout the regular season. So those are some words from Rhonda for our, our uh, committee here this morning. Um, with that, I'm going to have Lane go ahead and do an official roll call to um, we don't have to do any visitors because we don't have access to them, but we will do it to all of our committee members who are in here today. So, Lane? Christina Miner? Here. Oh. Sorry. That's okay. Austin Wirtz? Connie O'Donnell? Here. Wes Mock? Here. Don Myers? Here. Marco Hahn? Here. Ryan Mitchum? Here. Michael DeWall? Present. Sammy Chadwick? Here. Randy Mays? Here. Scott Manchester? Affirmative. And Wayne Vaden? Here. Awesome. So I think uh, Wayne and Marco are new members, right? Am I missing anyone else? and Wes Mock are new to our committee this year. So um, huge thank you to you guys for stepping in. And just to give you a little bit of a background, normally we have met this uh, or met these meetings in person just due to COVID and, and obviously just probably your world's uh, being crazy. It seems to be efficient to do it this way at this point. Um, so, but just know that if we did have a, a proposal in front of us, that would be where you would come in as a voting member um, the chair, Christina Miner, would stay out of the, the votes until uh, something is needed to be broken. And so at that point, it would just be up to this committee. You'll see we have our state rules interp and some officials on here, our site directors. Um, those do not participate in the voting. They're just here to be an advisory member of this committee. So with that, um, pretty light agenda for you this year. Um, like I said, we have no proposals. Um, all proposals are due to our office one week ahead um, and we've had nobody contact us. So um, kudos to the committee because I do think that means we're in a good place. I think we have a lot of um, positives that are happening within track and field. And I think this committee has done a really good job of getting out within their communities, having those discussions and bringing them back. And so I think we're in a really good place. So I think that's kudos definitely to this committee. Um, if you have any agenda items, I'll get down to that um, right after Gary's report. We could add any additional items if you do have anything as a committee member that you would like to bring forward. Um, so at that time, I, I think we've all been in enough Zooms this year and a half. I don't need to go through Zoom norms, so I'm going to skip right over that. Um, committee protocols, if we had to go into executive session, Christina Miner would call uh, for one, and then we would stop the recording if we were on the YouTube live, that would uh, stop as well. And we would uh, do what we need to in executive session and then come back on. Um, and with that, I'm gonna turn over to Lane really quick. We're already down to about five on the agenda and that'll be the report from Chaska. And I don't believe he could join us today, the president, uh, John. So I'm gonna let Lane give the report uh, that he shared. Thanks, Jen. John just wanted to share just that they do plan on doing the track clinic this this year. Um, and just, you know, they, they want to, as a representative of Chaska, they want to encourage coaches to, to get involved with their association. They've obviously got networking opportunities, liability insurance, 
um, and lots of other good networking um, and just resources, you know, getting in there with other coaches. So he wanted to share that, uh, reach out to them if you have any other questions, but uh, nothing, nothing major from, from Chaska at this point. Is there anybody else who's on that Chaska board or has any additional items? Sometimes some other coaches will sit on there, but okay, awesome. So moving forward, um, just track and field updates and changes, really nothing major. Again, I'm going to turn it over to Lane to talk about the process of the qualifying events through our new Our School platform. Uh, we plan to run track season as normal. Uh, there'll be no restrictions in place at this time. Obviously, you do need to work with your local county health departments for your own events. And then obviously, if you're crossing over to a different uh, district, you'll need to know what their protocols would be. Um, obviously, a little bit more restrictive in the indoor setting, but uh, just having those dialogues before. I went ahead on the agenda, listed our, our pretty much our season. So uh, practice uh, starts February 28th. And then obviously follows down, I don't need to read you those, with our culminating event, uh, May 19th through the 21st. Um, you should have received from our office, for all of you, a seasonal outlook calendar that has all of these dates on there. For some reason, if you haven't, or if you're not a member of a high school, Casey, Gary, Daryl, any of you all that would like that, let us know and we can send that your way too. Um, so again, we will need to have all the qualifying forms all checked off and approved. And so Lane, at that time, this time, I'd like you to go ahead and just walk through that process. Thanks, Jen. So there is a hope that well, this form will be on the new R school platform. Um, our school forms as they are, majority of them don't require an approval, which obviously this form without an approval process, it's, it's kind of pointless. So, um, this form it's the agenda you guys sent out. It is linked on there. You can just also go to the track page on Chassa now and find it there. If you guys have dates already and you know you're doing qualifying meets, you're more than welcome to start sending them in over email. We'll definitely accept them that way. Um, so for most, uh, for all intents and purposes, the form really is no different. Um, if you, even if we do end up having it su successfully go live on our school, you'll see no differences really. Information's the same. What we need from you is the same. Um, a few things that I would point out, just make sure that when you fill that form out, I know that it can probably turn into just a click, check the boxes and get it turned in. Um, but especially when it comes to officials, please make sure that when you click that box, it says you're gonna have this many officials and they're gonna be in this, these positions. And then we get the meet report form and you didn't have what you said you were going to have. Last year obviously was, was a little different, um, but going back to a, to a more normal season, please make sure that if you click that box uh, affirming that you'll have a certain number of, of, of officials that when we get that meet report form and Gary, I, and Jen look that over, that, that, that what you guys actually did is what you said you're going to do. So that obviously those number of officials has been approved through legislative council. Um, so that's something that that's an expectation from our office, especially with these being meets that are going to determine who's qualifying for state. That's important. The other thing that I know there was some issues with last year. Um, whoever you list as your results coordinator is who Max Preps is going to grant access to be able to upload results for that meet. So when we get a when we get an email that hey I, I don't have access to this meet, make sure that. If, if you intend as AED to be the one uploading results, then they need to be, you need to list yourself as the results coordinator, okay? There's not been a ton of issues with that, but last year there seemed to be some more and Max Prep just asked that we emphasize that. It just makes the process more efficient for you guys um, and just, you know, eliminates any potential issues with the results. Along with that, I'll kind of pass it off to Jen with this comment, but if you have any uh, discrepancies with results, please make sure that Jen can, can, can verify this, but I believe it's a week. You have a week to bring those to our attention. A lot of times a meet will happen in, in uh, April, March or April, and then the second to last week of the season, we get emails about issues with results. At that point, it's, it's too late for us to do anything. So this, back to the form, there's not really going to be many changes apart from potentially where you submit the form. Um, but and if you have any questions or issues with you're not sure you can get in the correct number of officials, reach out to Gary and he's great about helping people find 
find those officials and make sure that your, your meets are covered. So thank you so much, Lane. So you're correct. I think we got to a point last year where we had a couple teams who didn't either turn this, this form in. So we had no idea that there was even a track meet, nor did we have them turn in the second form to know that it was completed. So therefore in our mind, when we pull everything, there's no meet, we can't rectify that at that point. So it's very important that if you are the liaison within your district, or if you can help within, you know, your league to say, we need to make sure these checks and balances are, are done. So um, it is a requirement to have those officials there due to it being a qualifying event. Um, obviously it would be no different than we do for our other sports. And so those officials definitely need to be in place. Uh, Christina Miner did put in the chat, what happens if we don't have enough officials? Um, I think after Gary gets his big email blast out and we reach out to some people personally, we usually can cover it all, um, but we will deal with that when we get there. Sometimes if we have um, you know, some officials of a high caliber that can, can do kind of dual roles, we'll maybe approve it if we get to that point. Um, but we definitely try to, to meet the requirement that we're, that we're requesting. So any questions um, just about the qualifying process and all of that good stuff? All right. Um, so with that, I, I, there's a couple of people I'd like to speak today, and, and I don't know if Gary wants to go first with his, chat, um, his report, uh, Casey Logan, our state rules interp, and then Daryl Abeda, our site director. So why don't we go ahead and start with Gary, and you can give your officials report, and then we'll turn it over to Casey and then Daryl. Great. Thank you. Um, we have had a number of, uh, which is a good thing, a number of new officials who have indicated interest in officiating track and field. Uh, for this coming spring season, and that's uh, good information for us. What I do is once I receive that information, I contact them uh, via email and give them uh, the information that they in fact need and then invite them to respond back. And part of that responding back is something that I've started asking for is the uh, experience that they've had as an official within the sport of track and field, whether it be as a coach, whether it has been as an official from another state, uh, previous officials, et cetera, et cetera. So we can get some background information on these individuals and or whether they are in fact brand new officials. And because sometimes that makes a difference as well. Uh, we are in the process of going through and looking at what we can do this year for new officials who are coming on board and thinking about having a platform uh, specifically just for new officials on what the expectations are of an official, what their jobs, duties, responsibilities are, and what uh, they can in fact expect. For example, if someone uh, chooses to um, pursue the position as a starter, they need to know that they need a starter's pistol, number one, and that uh, helps, and the expense associated with that, and some of the uh, downfalls with that, uh, starter pistols, like anything else, are somewhat hard to come by, so we track those, or I track those, and try to find uh, whether they be online or whether they be local somewhere in the state to get that information. Shells is another um, uh, uh, piece of that. Um, that there seems to be a shortage of, just like everything else that's happening. But uh, we are um, looking forward to uh, bringing in these new officials and then, uh, as I mentioned, setting up a format to give them information that we possibly have uh, done in the past in the um, uh, personal settings up in Denver and uh, going from there. So I'll be getting with Daryl and, of course, Jen and Casey to see what we can in fact uh, get online so people can access that at any time. And that's something that we're gonna look uh, forward to do. Also, we're gonna start the process of certifying uh, for the spring uh, 2022 season and the uh, fall of 2022 uh, cross country season. We're gonna start that process in December this year rather than waiting until uh, January. With the first practice being on in February, we'd like to get that started and going um, because if we run into some issues with uh, some um, registration issues, then we will have plenty of time to get that taken care of. Also the testing through National Federation, et cetera, et cetera. So um, outside of that, if there are any questions, 
that's what we're looking at doing uh, this year. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you so much, Garrett. Can you, we're going to turn over to Casey at this point. Thank you. Well, I don't, ha I don't have a whole lot, um, quite honestly. Um, but as far as uh, being the rules in TERP and the new rules coming out in 2022, they're, they're really uh, fairly light. There's a, there's a, a few things in there, but uh, nothing, nothing real major. A lot of rules that are just clarifying uh, rules that they put forth a couple of years ago, uh, you know, about exchange zones and uh, running in the wrong direction on runways and stuff like that for clarification. Um, probably the, the biggest thing that all track coaches will be fairly pleased with is um, the issue that we've all fought for several years, which is the uh, manufacturer logo on, on waistbands that a lot of kids, that a lot of kids wear, and they have now made that legal. So um you know, I think I think that's a big win for everybody involved, uh, officials, coaches, athletes, because I know that, you know, I'm sure if not 100 percent, well, over 99 percent of your athletes, you have your athletes purchase their own um, their own uniform bottoms, which makes total sense. So so that's a good move. Um, any other questions or issues that you might have had from last year that you'd like me to address? Um, you know, please, please ask. Was there anything you guys had that you wanted to share at this time? This would be a good time for anything with state or regular season. Christina Miner, I'm going to turn it over. Do you have anything that you got to your your inbox, I should say? I have not received anything um, specifically. I just want to take a moment to thank Jen and Lane and everybody that was involved in state track last year. It being in June, I know it was a little harder to get people to come <laughs> help. Um, and I was there in the three days and it was a great event. It's great to have everybody there together. So I really appreciated um, what Chasa did. Coaches, athletes, uh, spectators were all amazing. Um, I'm really excited for this next spring as well. Um, you know, like Jen said, track was one of the ones that was the most normal for us last year. And I really appreciated that, obviously being a track lover. But thank you all for your help today. Um, you know, Gary and Casey, thanks for sharing your information and Lane and Jen really appreciate all of you. Thank you. I was going to call on you, but you kind of did it, but I'm going to call on you one more time at the end, but uh, Daryl Levada, you have anything from a site director? He's probably got cross country on the brain right now because he's been working so hard on that, but. I, I, I think the only thing I have is that, that cross country will be back the way it was um, two years ago. So, so that's good. It'll, it'll be a little bit easier. We are going to make a couple of changes that we saw last year that, that we felt improved uh, how the how the event uh, worked, and so we'll implement those as we as we go forward. As far as track and field is concerned, uh, basically at this point, I work with Gary and with officials. If they can't get a hold of Gary, they'll call me, and, and then I'll forward that information to Gary, and uh, we'll see what we can do to help help schools out with with their events. Uh, as we get closer to the state meet, I'll work with Jen and Lane and, and, and John um, and all the people at, at Jeffco, um, getting things lined up, um, whatever changes we have to make or whatever improvements that John and his crew are, are, are making, and, and we'll move forward that. So um, I'm kind of the, the guy behind the guy behind the guy behind the guy. So, so uh, I'll, I'll be there and I'll, I'll help you and support you guys as much as I can. Which doesn't happen without those guys, right? Um, great. So thank you so much, Daryl. Um, like I said, we're really excited and we do always offer an invitation to all of you to participate at the track meet. We can put you wherever you'd like to be, but if you would like to hand out awards or be at a gate, we always encourage uh, the committee to come be a part of it, even if it's for a little bit. Um, so with that, any additional discussion items from the committee? Anybody have anything, any questions or comments or anything? They did get feedback from last year. Um, this would be the time to share that. Jen, uh, as you know, I'm new to this, but a question I have is if I had a proposal to present, uh, like let's say next month, is it something that could be implemented this year? So a proposal to the track committee? Yes. 
So technically, no, it would have had to been through this process right here uh, okay. for the committee to vote on and then take it to legislative council. Um, you can definitely still with the legislative council process do some sort of proposal, like do certain proposals um, to go through that process. And so I'm happy to talk to you uh, in regards to that. Do you want to tell us what you're looking at? A few years ago, um, I was part of the Black Forest League and we presented um, an allowance of increasing the wind gauge, uh, not a, not to uh, not a record breaker, but in terms of qualifying for the state track meet. And um, for some reason, it was shot down simply because uh, at the time the committee chair didn't want to change, uh, have a change that year or whatever. And so I want to present that again because there's a lot of people I've talked to that would like to see that change happen. So I, this has been a topic that's been up for quite a few years and I, mm -hmm. I would open it up to some of the committee members who have been on here. Um, and I do, it was a committee it was unanimous if I remember right. Christina, I know was probably on at that point. I remember us being at the Radisson and that thing came forward and I think it was voting unanimously to go the opposite way. So, I mean, because of a committee member and this discussion being, I think we could go ahead and have this discussion. Um, mm -hmm. if, if it's entertained to go to a vote, um, you know, I can go on with Christina Minor and decide what we want to do on that. Um, you can obviously bring stuff from the floor to legislative council. Um, these types of things, they do want to see the backing of the committee. Um, mm -hmm. So I would just entertain a conversation at this point, but I would um, not be the one that could first a, a conversation. So it would definitely have to come from a committee member to go ahead and open the floor to open this discussion. Um, and then obviously, Christina, as you do, would need a second to stay alive to talk, so. Um, I know that um, that here on the Eastern Plains, we had a discussion about the wind gauge. Um, we get a lot of wind out here on the Eastern Plains, uh, Lyman, Cheyenne Wells. We also had a discussion about the San Luis Valley also had a lot of wind. They were just wondering if it could be put up to a, a th uh, three, um, which would be five miles an hour, and about that, and uh, but still keep the wind gauge at state the same because we can't change, you know, the uh, the records and stuff like that. Just it's just for the track meets, I think, is what they were just trying to help people out with there because of the wind out here and um, other places too. <laughs> If I can second this conversation to continue, um, I will say at Salida, we're, we're in the valley that the wind is just a constant issue. Uh, we host a meet and if we did allow the increase, it would allow, well, it would encourage more teams to participate in our meet. Um, and then on this, my experience as a 1A AD, uh, we're not, we weren't in the ability to split our teams and send them to multiple meets in one week. So uh, I know that there was one year uh, they never had a state qualifying legal time until like the week before state. Uh, so it's, if in terms of smaller schools, this is a bigger deal than many larger schools. And I think what's happened in the past, if I'm remembering, um, correctly, the times that's come up. Um, some people have brought um, data from surrounding states and what they allow for wind. I do know that based on some of that information that was brought forward, that even um, college level wind is higher than what we expect in Colorado. Um, and I think the surrounding states are either two and a half or three, if I remember correctly. So that's data that's been brought forward. Um, and those are the pieces that I, that I remember. And as a track coach, um, you know, for 15 years before I came into this position, um, it was for me, a place that I was also trying to increase the wind in Colorado for qualifying purposes as well. Yeah. And once again, this is just for qualifying for a state meet, not to set records, um, you know, if, I'll just leave it there. So.
Any other thoughts? Casey, do you have anything to, that you want to share or any any of our advisory committee members? Yeah, I, I, um, I can kind of piggyback off what Christina said because I've been there for all those discussions over the years. Um, you know, and, and again, the proposals and the discussions have been brought forth. It's just just what, um, you know, Marco said that, you know, this it, this has nothing to do with, you know, increasing the wind speed for, you know, state records and those types of things. What, you know, it's understood. It's just, it's just that sometimes the, the it, it's difficult for athletes to get a mark because it's, you know, it, it's so wind restrictive in some areas of the state. So, you know, that, that's pretty clear. I understand what everybody's asking. Um, and just to clarify at the, at the NCAA level, they, they do have a, a higher wind speed. Um, but, but the other thing that's different about what the NCAA has done is they, is they have a higher, a higher wind allowance. And then they also have those super regionals where everybody that, that is in there, they, they compete against each other head to head. And obviously, you know, what we do in Colorado is we don't have that. First time they would, you know, uh, be running head to head would be, would be at the state meet. And so I, I think the last time <clears throat> the committee, uh, when they voted this down, I think one of the main reasons, because the, the discussion really centered around, and, and somebody had even brought some data and stuff too, but it really centered around if, a, if, if an athlete, um, you know, is in that, you know, potentially 18th spot and has a, you know, has the 18th fastest time or maybe in those, you know, from 15 to 18 and has a 2.0 wind allowance. And then somebody else, if let's say we just, you know, uh, raise the allowance to, to 3.0. Okay. And so there's another athlete that, um, you know, has a time with a two point with a plus 2.9 wind allowance. Um, and bump somebody with a 2.0. So I, I guess the, the argument at that point in time centered around, you know, is a, is a, is a 2.0 wind allowance with even a little bit, you know, a couple hundred slower of time. How does that compare to somebody that gets an extra nine tenths uh, a meter per second wind speed? You know, is that the concern there was, are you bumping some people out? And you know, it's it's valid discussion to have because there's arguments to, for me, there's arguments of centered around both sides. You know, somebody's going to get left at home out of the top 18. And, you know, um, just like you guys are talking about in certain parts of the state, and, and you make a good point, probably for lower classification schools and the ability to travel and split teams and do those kinds of things and do the best thing you can for your athletes, you're pretty limited, um, you know. So it's a, you know, I, I don't, I don't really have an, I don't really have an answer to it. I've just been there for those discussions and they're, and they're really interesting because there's, there's good points on, on both sides. Um, you know, um, you know, I, I don't know, just, just listening to what you guys have said today, it, you know, and, and I don't know if this is even possible, but if it, if it isn't, if it's a bigger issue, for lower classification schools in, in, in 1A, 2A, you know, can we possibly look at mo modifying it? And 3A. <laughs> and 3A, well, now you're moving up the ladder. But I, but I guess I guess that's the thing. If it, if, we, if it really is, we really do have data that supports that at lower classification schools, do, we even, do you guys even consider making the modification, um, you know, by classification? Um, you know, because it, it, it may be different. I mean, the, the larger schools, 4A, 5A schools may feel differently. A lot of it's geographic location, a lot of it's school size. So um, again, that's just kind of my perspective of, you know, what the discussion has centered over. And it's been an issue that's been, dis you know, it's been brought up or has been brought up several times. And I think yeah. ever since we went to top 18, it's become more of a conversation because you know, you just hope that that weekend that you have kids entered in 100 and 200, and that's their focus that week, that the wind plays nicely with you um, versus trying to hit a, a mark that doesn't, doesn't move. So I've felt conversations around here more since we went to the top 18 than when we had a qualifying time and top, you know, um, 
obviously not even that conversation wasn't even a topic when we had top three at regionals. So it's transition based on the changes that we've made to qualify. Um, so I think that's an important part of that also. And, and if we look at making the change, I don't know that it would be equitable just to do lower classifications because not all lower classifications are in, in areas like that. Some of them are smaller private schools, you know, within Denver, Color Springs, um, that have the opportunity to get to meet. So um, to me, if that's a standard we end up going to, it should be at all classifications, not just the lower classifications. So Casey and Christina, you're exactly right. So a lot, all of this has been talked about several times and I think it is probably time to look at it again, Marco. I worry about kind of this process at this point. I right. think what we need to do is this would be my suggestion, and again, it's just a suggestion because I'm not a committee member, but I think over the next year, taking the time to collect the data, have those really, really in-depth conversations, like, and, and Mark Roberts won't mind me using him as an example, he came several, several times with Cross Country to get more um, opportunities to score athletes, and I think what really finally got it for him is, one, is just that he got the data and he started to have conversations with people outside of like his area. So he was able to bring us um, very, very laid out information that helped. And, and he did come two or three times um, to, to that committee. And I think, again, I think it's just getting there. It's a major change, right? From where we've been, good, bad, or indifferent. And so how do we set it up to give the most information for the best dialogue to be able to make the best decision? And I think that's what our job is. And so my my recommendation would be to take this year and get that data, be able to do surveys, uh, you know, be able to go out and maybe, you know, some of this committee will go out to different areas and see different things, um, be at different meets, and then be able to get that proposal in front of the membership so that they have time to look through it. And then when we come back again to this committee in a year from now, we can have that dialogue that it really needs to have and make a decision one way or the other. That would be my suggestion. I'm not trying to you know, prolong your request here, but I think for process no. purposes, that, that's the better way to, to go, but. I understand, and, and I wasn't expecting to get this pushed through today or anything, but uh, like I said, uh, this is my first committee meeting and I just wanna, uh, I wanted to just get it out there. Uh, no, coming at it from, my past experience and um, it's something that still stuck with me that I was I, I was discouraged when it was rejected before. Uh, yeah. And so I, I'm like, hey, now I'm in a position. Sure. Where and my I think voice it can be heard. great that you brought it up, right? Because had you not brought it up today, we mm -hmm. could get this dialogue going. And it sounds like it wasn't just you uh, from a committee standpoint. There was obviously a few that, that are kind of in that same uh, mindset. So mm -hmm. again, I think a great conversation. I'm super excited that you brought something because I just texted Lee and I was like, we have to have a committee meeting last longer than 30 minutes. And so you gave us some meat and potatoes for this meeting. So I'm very excited about that. Um, but again, I do think, um, you know, I'm in my 10th year and I definitely think this has came up two or three times. And so it's definitely, within our membership and it's definitely something that I think needs to be vetted to its fullest with data you know Lane and I are here to help we can send surveys we can um, I go out to a lot of track meets but then now I can add this to a discussion topic talk to me about how you feel about this and then we can gather that information mm -hmm. uh, bring it back and, and and kind of go through it as a committee but again that's just Jen's thoughts so I'm again opening it up to everybody else Christina you can you can give some feedback any of the the members, um, voting members can of the committee can speak up as well. I think that's a good plan because it gives time for people to gather data on both sides, right? So then we can have a really good conversation of the impact across the state on making that change. Uh, Marco, when I was looking at it, uh... For a couple of years ago, I was um, going off a mile split and looking at the wind gauge there. And you can see from the Eastern Plains, San Luis Valley, on um, a lot of high winds at certain track meets, depending on the day. 
So that's where I gathered a lot of my information there too. Okay. Any other thoughts? Marco, how does that sound? Since it's something you brought, I want to be respectful of what you've brought. No, uh, uh, that, that excites me actually. Um, I know just past contacts, I can uh, touch base with them. Uh, I believe there's been some data collected from uh, uh, Peyton High School that I want to reach out to them again. And then uh, just the fact of our meet here in Salida, uh, I've been told like it's a wind tunnel in the spring. And so sure. I'll have opportunities to look up uh, look up that data. And, and then once again, I'll reach out to just as many people as I can. Uh, and in fairness, you want to get both sides, right? So if there is another side that the committee, as you're representing your leagues, your districts, we need the pros and the cons of both sides because we need all the information provided to us to be able to make the best decision, obviously, yes, for our state and, and our members across the state. So um, again, I, I think this is great. I, I appreciate you bringing this uh, topic back up. Um, I know Christina and I have talked about it even last year. We were shocked that it didn't come back up um, along with some other things. But um, I think this is one that continues to come back around. So I think that's great. Any other things from the members? Um, Jen, there's a couple things in the chat box. Oh, sorry. No, you're okay. Let's see. Okay, so Wayne, uh, you would like to address an adequate warm-up and throwing ring and or safety throwing services, create a for formula rule or a formal rule for warm-up through. Okay, do you wanna talk a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, during the state meet last year, my uh, shot putter, Giovanni Meeks, um, she was ranked number one throughout the season. She was in the second flight of the shot put and um, the first flight finished and um, she was warming up and the referee, according to my throws coach, uh, prematurely stopped the warm up for the second flight. So what she did was went over to the asphalt surface and started doing her spins over in that area um, and broke her ankle, wasn't able to compete at all. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking at the email from my coach. He's saying that there should be a formal rule with regard to how many throws you get in that warm up in the safe throwing surface, or there should be an alternative safe throwing surface for the kids to warm up with uh, or, or on so that they can uh, actually have an adequate warm up. So, so I'll, I'll let Daryl and I were both there, as a matter of fact, and we both got over to that young lady, and, and that was definitely a very devastating moment for sure. Um, and, and to be honest with you, there should be the only people that can change a warm up time would be our state rules and Terp, who is also our head referee, our field head refer or head field referee and myself. And so those are things that we don't do. And when I talked to that group, um, they, they said they did it, but at this point it, it's either here nor there, except we do want to make sure that that doesn't happen again. But I will tell you, a lot of times, even with a full warm up, we'll walk down there. We see people choosing to have this this area to continue to do their spins or warm ups and those types of things. So um, I don't know, Daryl. I'll let you talk just a little bit about that. Do you want to talk about that process of of how that looks uh, with our field events and how I mean how that process has changed? But truly, what they're allowed and what we've what our standard is. I'll let you just talk about our, what our standard is. I, I think everybody's aware of, of, of the uh, limitation of area we have as far as warming up. And then obviously when we get to the state meet, uh, the number of spectators, coaches, uh, family members that come even restrict that area even more. Um, it was very unfortunate. Like Jen said, her and I were there uh, when the incident happened. Um, it, it, you know, we, we, we tried to, to, interpret and understand what was going on at that, at that point. Um, as, as I was listening, I was kind of thinking, well, um, do we have something in the, uh, in the bulletin or, or, or in the information that we sent out, you know, for the state meet that indicates the, the number of minutes that each, each person has? Um, I'll be honest with you. Uh, we all basically 
uh, do it the same amount of time. Uh, I go to the officials and I, you know, we go from heat one to heat two. And uh, uh, we're, we're trying to make sure that they have adequate warm up. But in, in some instances, and obviously in this instant, uh, it was not enough time. And so um, I guess that's my question. Do we have something written down in, in the bulletin? Or... So, yeah. So when we, we took this, I think we've, we've had a standard. And the standard for me through all of this is that it's consistent and fair within every flight that every athlete has the same opportunity. And so what we're going to do this year is we'll lay it out very, very well in the bulletin, what that is. And then when we have our officials meeting on Wednesday, again, reiterate the fact that this is the way it will be followed and nothing can change this. So um, there's no reason to rush field events because they get done before our running events. So if we do have weather delays, we can wait it out to get to that appropriate safety um, you know, with the drying of whatever surface we need to, all of those things. So I think it's just about having something more concrete. You know, we've always said you get X amount of throws or you get this X amount of time. Where is that written and how can everybody gravitate to the back thing? So Wayne, to answer your question, that is coming. It'll be very laid out in the, the bulletin. Um, again, I don't know I know we had a long conversation and kind of went through the process because it was very important to both Daryl and myself and our athletic trainers and everybody how that whole timeline and process worked and went. Um, so we we very much appreciate the feedback from you all, uh, as well as the family. Um, and she is an amazing athlete, like just seeing her there. I mean, she is a stud, right? Like we know that. And so we know we're going to see great things. And so it was it was horrible. It is not a way that we want to see any athlete um, not be able to participate and you're, you know, one minute away from stepping out on a performance area. So um, again, whatever we can do to kind of streamline that, um, again, our officials are expected to have that equity piece in line. Um, and, and again, we do have our field event referees that walk around. We have our, you know, our site directors and myself that walk around. And so we will just be a little bit more uh, reminding uh, throughout the process. So even when we do get weather, letting them know nothing can change until, until we have to for the whole thing. So yes, go ahead. Let me offer a suggestion because sure. uh, <clears throat> I know that when we train up at CU, there's a removable ring uh, for the indoor. Uh, is there any way we can utilize one of those big removable rings and just place them there so that the athletes aren't tempted to do their spins on the concrete. Yeah, and really it's asphalt. I think it's uneven oh, asphalt, right? Asphalt. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, definitely things that we can look at and work with Jeffco to, to see some different options for sure. Yeah, and I think they work, but I, this will be a good one to throw at them with the removable one from, from CU. So any other thoughts? Um, did I miss anything else in the chat, Christina? Let me unmute myself. Yeah, there's also um, one in here. Um, also, many of the small school meets have relied on certified officials that are also coaches to be able to run the meet. Um, Brian's wondering if that's still uh, still allowed. So as far as coaches being in those official roles, is that what the question is? Yeah, I think was? it's talk Brian's on here, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ahead, Brian. yeah, that's it. Because again, on the Western Slope, uh, there's not that many officials and uh, a lot of our meets are pretty small, but I know when they went to uh, go into four uh, meet officials, it's, it's become a problem in some of the more remote areas. And I know in the past, a lot of times, uh, you know, the coach for the host school was also a certified meet official and would help yeah. out with that. So we're definitely, um, we realize those kind of situations and we work through those kind of on an indep independent basis. Mm -hmm. uh, we definitely want to work through what we're requ what's required and that's the four officials. And so if you get to a point where you can't get those so that we can separate it and I can give you 
a list of why we have this in place with when, when games committees have to make, you know, decisions. And then we got coaches involved. Uh, we had a really sticky one and it was at a 5A level, which is, is, is a different, I want to be transparent as a different classification, but I think what we need to do is, is try to get those officials that are outside or, you know, maybe not participating in that meet, but they are a coach, but they're not actually participating in the meet, work through some of those. And then ultimately Gary and I have approved different things based on different situations. Um, and so we just, I, I really want to try to encourage no different than basketball or football or anything else that we have true officials there as we're qualifying into these meets. And I understand, and I'm, and I'm not saying that we can't work with the coaches that are officials, but I want to try to keep the integrity of what we're asking for within track with officials. So does that, does that answer that? Yep. Okay. And now there's another one in there, Jen, from okay. Randy. Um, he apologizes that if this has already been brought up, but he would love to see a discussion on the girls' sprint medley relay and why we continue to run that event and either remove it or add a boys' medley as well. So this came to the committee, I don't know, three or four years ago, Casey? Does that sound right? Um, and, and again, a proposal can always come through, lots of discussion around that, and ultimately voted to keep it as is, giving that opportunity still on that side. Anybody... Or want to talk to that in case you can. Yeah, I, 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 if I, I think what happened is I, I think the committee, the committee voted to Move just do, do re, re, no, just to do away with the sprint med. Oh, um, that's what the committee voted. What happened was there were some schools that across the state that did you know that that wanted to keep it, and I think they went and presented it legislative council. And they convinced legislative council to keep it in. So legislative council went against the recommendation of the committee. And that is and, true. And there's yeah. one other piece to this is at one point in the bylaws, all of the events were listed for track and you don't see that anywhere else. And so we had to make a move to remove those because if that's the case, then you got to go through a bylaw change to remove it. So we had done some of that. But exactly what Casey had said is by the time it got to legislative council, it was voted. And I don't remember what the vote was, but I do think it was pretty, pretty high in favor of keeping it. Um, it wasn't like it was a close split. But again, four or five years ago of a conversation that, you know, can definitely be brought back with what we're talking about with um, wind, wind, wind times. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it was, it definitely was brought to this committee. We talked through it and kind of moved it on, if you will, and it stopped at Legislative Council. And if I remember correctly, some of that conversation about whether or not to add in the boys was trying to figure out how it would fit into an already very tight schedule at the state track meet. Um, and so I think that's why the part of the reason the committee decided to say, okay, we don't need the sprint medley because it's not a race that they'll do in college. Most states don't compete in the sprint medley. Um, and yeah, I, I remember it being a pretty significant difference in vote at legislative council to keep it. Well, just, I mean, we, we are, there's only one other state besides Colorado that runs that identical event. So, I mean, it's a, it's just not something that happens across the country either. So, you know. So Randy, if that's something that you want to start, you know, to put a proposal in for next year, we can talk through that as well. Okay. Yeah. I think I'd like to try it again. Okay. We'll see. It's going to be tough, right? Because some schools, I mean, they cert it certainly favors some schools over others, right? Larger schools are always going to benefit from an extra event, you know, points wise. So, you know, it's, it's something that is going to like in a straight up vote is probably always going to be tight at, at the very least. I, I know a I lot do. of big 5A schools like the girls sprint medley because it's another event for them. If, if I remember it correctly, though, quite honestly, I, I, I think the, um, it, it was more smaller schools that went to legislative council and, and, and got that overturned. I, I, I think, I mean, I'm not that there aren't some uh, 4A, 5A schools that would like to keep it, but I think the majority of 4A, 5A people were, were for just, were for getting rid of it. And I, I think you're right. That's why I unmuted myself. Uh, I, I know that uh, sometimes some of these small schools have really tiny track teams and a sprint medley is the way to get yeah. 
Uh, that's what I was about to join in. With. I was just going to add that too. That's <clears throat> exactly what it, what came out of the small schools. Yep. Yeah, that's it. So again, with all of these great discussions for us, right? We're we're a small group here. Again, when any anytime you're thinking of this, I I definitely charge you to go out within the membership and have those conversations on both sides, you need the pros and the cons. And especially if you're looking to bring something up to legislative council, you wanna have the conversation before because legislative council is not the time to have the dumb, the conversation and break it into, um, you know, this is pros and cons. Those conversations should happen ahead of time. You come in, you you give your, um, you know, your explanation of your thoughts, and then we make a vote. And so I think sometimes what stops some of this is that, the conversation gets too heavy within legislative council and not enough people have had time to think about it, process it, all of those things. And so again, the whole, the more you can do ahead of time, bring it to the committee. We vet kind of vet through that process here, have discussion and decide as a committee, are we wanting to put our, our stamp on this, moving it forward or, Hey, the get, you know, other information we've gathered says us, you know, kind of leads us down this path. So again, all of our job here is to represent our state, getting all of those discussion um, items in both both ways and, and then making the best decision that we can. So again, both of those topics have been here before. Um, and, and again, I do think Connie said it best and I was getting ready to say it. There was a, a large group of the small schools who came back and said, no, we really like that, um, you know, for X, Y, and Z. So any other, any other things out there? Did I miss anything else in there, Christina? No, okay. Well, I'm excited. We at least got to an hour. I think this was great. I'm glad to have some dialogue and some questions and, uh, and again, just topics, because then that means we are doing our job. We are listening to our members and, and we have some work to do. So I'm excited that, that I was really worried yesterday with Lane. I said, I'm worried that we're not going to last longer than 30 minutes. And then at one point we jumped down to like eight and I'm like, okay, we have 15 minutes left or we're only 15 minutes. So, um, so with that, I just do want to turn it back over to Christina Miner, our chair, who's been awesome. Um, she's served on this committee for quite a while, and then we put her in the, the chair position. But really, Christina, I just want you to kind of end the meeting with giving us a charge and a direction that you see that we need to be for this year with track and field, and uh, then we'll have an official adjournment. Great. Thanks, Jen. Um, you know, thank you all for the great conversation today. Um, we have talked about things that have come up and things change. And I think there's some energy to really find the data that supports the things that we're talking about it, uh, talking about, and people that are excited to try to figure out the best way to move forward. And so if I were to, um, you know, make a charge, just make sure we're communi communicating with our areas and the people that we work with, so that when we bring the items that we talked about back to the committee, we have a great sense of what everybody's kind of feeling across the state, what's happening other places, so that we can best serve our kids. Um, and I really appreciate everybody's work today and conversation. Awesome. Anything else from anyone? Yes, Jen, this is Gary. Um, yes. Can we have the new members to the committee um, uh, introduce themselves one more time and uh, what uh, school or area they represent? Sure. Thanks. Wayne, do you want to start? Uh, good morning, committee. My name is Wayne Vaden. I coach at the Northfield. I've been coaching um, for a long time, um, over 25 years. I was at Montbello, George Washington East, and now at Northfield. Um, I'm an attorney by, by profession, and uh, I also have a, a club, the Angel Flight Track Club. Um, it is great to be on this committee, and uh, hopefully my input will help in some way or another. <clears throat> Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, Wayne. Wes? Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Wes Smock. I'm the athletic director at Grandview High School. Um, I believe it's my fifth year as the athletic director here at, uh, at Grandview and 22 years in education. Awesome. Thanks. And Marco? I'm Marco Hahn. I'm with Salida High School. I uh, just took over a few months ago from Jim Coscarelli. Uh, before that, I was at Pikes Peak Christian School the last nine years. Awesome. Did I forget anybody? I think that was it. Okay. 
Thank you, Gary. You kind of lead way into where I was going. So that's great that we, we got a full uh, report from our new committee members. And then we have a, a large group that's going off after this year. So uh, Brian, Austin, Michael, Connie, and Sammy um, have fulfilled their term and um, obviously served us very, very well. And so we look for any recommendations you all have, and then we'll obviously look at kind of the sheet and make sure we've met our geographical needs. But uh, we truly appreciate it. And we always extend, you know, please be a part of these meetings. Um, it, sometimes when a large group like that goes off at one time, or even, you know, even one or two that have been on for two terms or whatever it may be, as a chair, we, the perspective is good, right? And so just being able to be an advisor or be a member uh, of the audience that can, you know, talk or help with the conversations, I think, um, is always great. So, but we really appreciate you. We do feel like all of you had benefited our committee and, um, you know, supported our members as you, as you went through the last few years. So huge, huge thank you to all of you. So with that, Christina, I'll let you adjourn, but again, thank you guys all for being here. Um, you know, we definitely like to do these in person for the networking piece, but, uh, appreciate you guys doing it in this capacity. And uh, if anybody has asked you where the, the track recording will be, I'll make sure Lane has that somewhere for those who want to just kind of see the pre-discussions that we had today. Awesome. Have a great day. Christina, it's on you. Thank you. And I, I, I end this meeting. I don't even know how to do that. So we're and done. At 10 a.m. <laughs> One hour exactly. So thank you guys so much. Have a great weekend. Stay safe and healthy. Thank you. Yeah, Bye-bye.